You are listening to the Daily Homily for Magdala in the Holy Land. Jesus said to his disciples, When the Son of Man comes in glory and all the angels with him, he will sit upon his glorious throne, and all the nations will be assembled before him. And he will separate them one from another, as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will place the sheep on his right and the goats on his left. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. A stranger, and you welcomed me. Naked, and you clothed me. Ill, and you cared for me. In prison, and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him and say, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you a drink? When did we see you a stranger and welcome you, or naked and clothe you? When did we see you ill or in prison and visit you? And the king will say to them in reply, Amen, I say to you, whatever you did for one of the least brothers of mine, you did for me. Then he will say to those on his left, Depart from me, you accursed, into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me no drink. A stranger, and you gave me no welcome. Naked, and you gave me no clothing. Ill and in prison, and you did not care for me. Then they will answer and say, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or ill or in prison and not minister to your needs? He will answer them, Amen, I say to you, when you did not do what you did not do for one of these least ones, you did not do for me. And these will go off to eternal punishment, but the righteous to eternal life. The Gospel of the Lord. These marvelous readings bring together a lot of biblical themes and in a way reveal a hidden kingdom. When we look around our world today, think if you are a person in the human trafficking arena, either in charge of it or inside it, where is the kingdom of God there? If you are in a concentration camp, 60, 70 years ago, and maybe there are some around still today. Where is the kingdom of God? If you're in a hospital and you're sick and dying, where is the kingdom of God? If you're praying for a child that has cancer and the child dies, where is the kingdom of God? So it's a hidden kingdom. We believe the kingdom of God exists, but we don't see it. Maybe we see some glimpses of it in a beautiful sunrise. We see it in the smile of a child. We see it in, in different things. But we have many impressions that we don't have the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is hidden. And the kingdom of God exists, Jesus says in this text, inherit the kingdom prepared for you before, from the foundation of the world. That means God has a kingdom prepared for us. I'm not sure how many texts in Scripture are repeated four times. And in the Gospel, the list of people that are in need are listed four times. And normally, we good people in the civilized, semi-civilized world, have made a living, have studied, have done degrees, have an employment, have a place to stay, a stable life, relative security. We think about the sick over there and the poor over there and the imprisoned over there. We hardly ever see them. 
and we think about the naked, we don't see too many naked people, physically naked, we don't see too many people um, dying of hunger, um, you know, thirsty people, yeah, maybe we're hiking in a mountain and you give some water to somebody, but it's not a big deal, and it's not a life-threatening situation. But what about you? Imagine the day you were born. You were all bloody. Maybe you were screaming. Maybe you were scared. I don't know if anybody has been able to get in scientifically into the mind of a newborn to know what their feelings are. The struggle to come out. This different world that was so protected inside mom. And I'm in this wild world. What could you do that day? What could you do when you were a year old? What could you do when you were four or five years old in this world? And then we think of the street children in Brazil. And then flip over the page to the days of our ending. We will be in bed sick, maybe. Maybe it will be an accident. Maybe it will be a slow disease, a cancer. Maybe it will be violence. We cannot tell. But we will be totally poor. Somebody, if our body is still intact, will wash our body with respect. We will be laid in a grave. We will be covered up, lying under a stone with a name and a date. Imprisoned, more than sick, dead, more than hungry, more than thirsty, for justice, for eternal life. And this is where the king comes. And he doesn't come just to lift us up from that moment, but he comes in the person who's thirsty today, who's alone today, who's neglected today. This is the amazing thing about God, preparing the kingdom for the future and being totally identified with each one of us who's so broken. And here we have this beautiful imagery from the biblical tradition because the people here were nomad shepherds. And we have Ezekiel talking about the king of Israel who shepherded his people. And David was a shepherd. It's not just David, it's all the kings of Israel. And then David took the wife of one of his soldiers and killed his soldier indirectly through another person. So much conniving, so much abuse, so much horror. And God is saying, I am fed up with my kings. I will shepherd the people. And this is what we have in Christ the King. This is the king who takes us from sinking forever, from our hatreds, our violence, our death, forever. To love Christ the king is surely to embrace the person of Jesus Christ, is surely to pray, but to embrace Christ the king and to give him a hug is to hug a poor person. To Bend a weak person. Not enough to protest. Sometimes that voice is necessary to really help. Not enough to pray for them, to really help. Prayer is very important and very powerful and a great gift. We need to do things. And it's repeated four times. And the kingdom is hidden in those people. And one day it will be hidden in us. And it was already hidden in us when we were born. And it will be hidden in us again as we die. So we're identified. Jesus identified with them. We're identified with them. So our hearts should be filled with compassion. The Lord is my shepherd. And so the people around me don't lack. Because I try to bless them. With a smile. With encouragement. We think of the plague of suicide. That scourge in our world, western world today. How many people have hidden brokenness that nobody sees. How much care we need to have for everybody because we have no idea what anybody is going through. No idea. So let us be part of the kingdom of God, not just at the end of time, not just in his mind at the foundation of the world, but in each person with whom we live reveals the kingdom of God. Thank you for joining us today. If you want to learn more about Magdala, follow us on YouTube and on Facebook.